Hey guys, what's going on? Derek here. And today we are doing another live training. Since last week, things went really well with the Beta Sam live training that we did, setting up searches, playing around with some new filters, and just kind of getting the uh, basically the strategy behind. And we talked about you know your output in your searches. If you're getting bad results in your searches, it's really largely only going to be as good as the input in your searches. Well, today we're continuing on with beta.sam live training. And today we're going to be focusing on finding those bid opportunities that do not require past performance as an evaluation factor. I've gotten this question uh, quite significantly. You know, quite a few um, people have reached out to me really over the past year saying, hey, Derek, how do I go about finding bids that do not require past performance? I'm a new small business owner. I'm new to government contracting. And this is the number one thing that's holding me back from bidding on contracts. So because I've received that so much, I'm dedicating this entire, you know, live today, our live training to going about and finding basically what we're going to do is we're going to find as many as we can. And I'll rely on you guys in the comments to, you know, give me some some insight on, you know, uh, an industry you want to look at, a NAICS code, keyword, whatever, because this is about you today. Um, so when the time comes in just a few minutes and you want to start putting those in the chat now, um, feel free to put your agency, your next code, whatever. Otherwise, I'll just use random examples. And what we're going to be doing is pulling up actual live bid RFPs, RFQs that are due at some point in the future. And I'm going to show you how to, as quickly as possible, discern and extract that key information for making a, really a bid no, dis, bid, no bid decision about, you know, does this bid require past performance as an evaluation factor or not? So that's what we're going to be doing today. <clears throat> we got Steven in the house. Steven, what is going on? Hope all is well, Steven. I did get your email, by the way, so look forward to uh, talking to you soon in the future. Uh, Don, what's going on? Hello. Thanks for joining, hanging out with us today, guys, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube. Again, we are looking at those bids that do not require past performance as a requirement and evaluation factor when you're putting your proposal response together. This is a strategy that we talk about actually in the forthcoming interview, guys. Um, I'll talk about it towards the end of today, but I got another interview already uh, finished earlier this week with another um, amazing person in contracting. And uh, my interview with her will be posting uh, on Monday morning. Hopefully that's, that's my plan. And one of the things we talk about that is, is the different evaluation factors and how new contractors can use uh, basically those contracts, those solicitations that do not require past performance as a strategy for your business to kind of you know get your foot in the door to start going after bids, not letting that hold you back. So in that interview, I'm going to post next Monday, we talk about it. But today we're doing the live training um, with some of the intro workings of how to find these in beta.sam.gov. So, yep, uh, Lala, uh, what's going on? Thanks for joining us uh, this, this afternoon if you're on the East Coast or this morning if you are on the West Coast, guys. I hope you guys had a great week. We're going to get started here in just a minute. Um, it's waiting for a few more folks to join. <clears throat> and I swear, every uh, it seems like every Friday I go live. It's raining outside, and so I'm always, like, clearing my voice. I'm always having this issue with clearing my voice. Um, so hopefully, I mean, down in Alabama, it's supposed to get hot pretty soon. So I'm curious to see how that's going to go. Um, Antoine, what's going on? Antoine, thanks for uh, hanging out with us today. Uh, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, we are multi-streaming. And today we are going to be going and finding those bids that do not require past performance uh, in beta.sam.gov. And this is a strategy. This is called capture management, guys. It's not a term that I've used a lot. Um, in past videos because it's something that uh, I was fearful that a lot of you didn't know what that is. But now as we you know, continue to create new videos, do new live trainings, I'm gonna start using more of the industry language to just kind of bring you guys up to speed. Um, so what we're doing is called capture management. And part of what today is, is part of uh, making a bid, no bid decision. Uh, basically, you need to have a series of filters, methodology, to discerning the bids that you are going to go after and the ones that you're not going to go after. And today's video using past performance is one of those criteria. 
is a criteria of capture management in making a bid no bid decision that um, contractors use all the time. And uh, it's very common. And um, I think it's about time that you guys kind of get up to speed in learning how to do that and kind of learning the process that maybe a little bit larger businesses use and, you know, kind of, you know, how you can do it as a team of one or a team of three, if you're kind of just getting started out. But I will tell you uh, right out of the gate, we're going to get started here now, um, just a second. <clears throat> there is no filter. So I, I don't want anybody like hanging on, watching the entire video, waiting for like the magic to happen. Um, yeah, there's this missing filter. If you just click this filter, it will show you all of the bids. Um, man, I wish it was that easy, right? And uh, I know that because a number of you have asked me like, hey, how do I sort these? How do I filter these in beta.sam? So I can so I can just find the ones that don't require past performance. That's a million dollar idea. You know, if you're a programmer, if you can do that, if you can work with beta.sam to somehow um, set that up with the government, um, you will become a millionaire because that would be hugely beneficial. So today what we're doing is we're, we're basically doing it the only way that's possible. And we're going to be basically opening the bids and finding that information quickly. That's what I'm gonna be showing you to do because it's the only way to do it. So sorry, I don't have any magic for you, but uh, again, today, that's really all we're gonna be focused on. So I won't be talking about everything like I do when I read through bids live. We're just looking for past performance. And then once we find that, we'll kind of see how long it took to find that. And then we'll just move on to the next. So onto the next, onto the next, onto the next. I wanna get through as many as I can today. Um, so I think we can just uh, get to it. Craig, what's going on? We have uh, me busy. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks for hanging out with us uh, as well, guys. So I will now share my screen and we can, looks like I already am. There we go. Then we can uh, hop on over here to beta.sam.gov and get started. So if anybody has a, a NAICS code, or a keyword or whatever industry you're in, if you want me to look at bids that are relevant to your industry, like I mentioned earlier, put those in the comments. I don't have any yet. So I'm going to kick this off with just something random. And honestly, I'm not gonna use any filters uh, for those type of things. So I'm just going to go to published date, custom date. I'm gonna just do 60 days from now for this first example. What's today? Oh, well, we're just gonna go, no. Today is the 12th, and then we'll go 60 days out. So 4, 12, 2021. So we have now a 60 day out filter for, see, okay, here's a good learning uh, example. I did this under published date. I did not mean to do that. These damn things all look so familiar, and this is something that I, I do all the time. I didn't mean for it to be published date. I want it to be response, so make sure you're doing response. Um, I may even take this out, show you how to do that. So um, this published date box, all I have to do is uncheck it. And now that's going to go away. So now I can do custom date 2-12-2021 to 4 12 2021 60 days out. Then click filter because we're looking for response dates. I want things that are due in the future. I don't really care as much when they were published. It's just not actionable item for me. So we have this in place. And then the other filter I'm going to put just so I can find something and look at it for you. We have to look at stage three, solicitation, combined synopsis solicitation. These are the only bids that you should be looking at if you're gonna look at something to do capture management on bid, no bid. This is stage three um, of the four stages of a bid that you need to look at. Because I put no keywords, I put no, no agency, no anything, um, next codes. I've got a list of 5,000 and that's fine because for right now, I don't care. I can use anything. And I, guys, I do see you in the, the comments putting your next code. So that's awesome. So um, I do see you. I'll do this first example and then I'll bounce over there and I'll start pulling some of those. So thank you for that. Um, but again, for now, I don't care as much. So I'm just going to maybe pull something that looks like it's easier to understand for us as an example. And then I will find as quickly as possible if this requires past performance or not, okay? Because if you don't require past performance, then you know a lot of you who may otherwise not be able to bid on it can bid on it. So let's just Apian Software Acquisition. Okay, this looks like a name of a software. So any of you software IT folks, IT next codes, um, this one is for you. 
it looks like they've copy and pasted the solicitation into the body of the beta SAM posting. So you will see that quite often. I'm not going to look at it because I want to go straight to the solicitation documents. So we have request for quote. Let me see what this looks like. It may be short, it may be long. I don't know. All right, let me zoom in for you. So they're looking for a you know, period of performance. We're not getting into that right now. Item pricing. First thing I'm going to do is go to control F, control find. I'm looking for past performance as a keyword, literally to pull out of this document so I don't have to search for it. Keep in mind, this is 16 pages long, so it's not super long. Um, post award evaluation, that's not really what we're looking for. They're telling us, hey, your, your CPARs will be uh, given a rating, your report card, if you will, will be given a rating. Um, and that's the only thing that pulls up in here. So now I'm going to go to, I'm just gonna type experience and nothing comes, yeah, nothing comes up for experience. So no keywords for past performance or experience. That means we are leaning towards them not asking for it because that is what they would be calling it if they were uh, requiring that. So coming back up, I'm going to do a little bit more of a thorough browse. Now that I got that out of the way, we've got these FAR clauses, option to extend the terms of the contract, education acquisition regulations. So guys, the first step I do, I always do control F, just so you're following. Control F, control find, whatever it is on a Mac, I'm not sure, um, whatever your find button is, type in past performance or past experience. It's the first thing that you should do to find it. Um, I see no evaluation factors in this document. And since this is an RFQ, they very well may just be asking for price, which would mean that this is, if we if we get there, a um, no past performance required. So it says item price, awards will be made, uh, lowest quote, so they're going LPTA on this. That's another sign. LPTA is often associated um, not always, but often associated with not requiring past performance. And then the other thing with past performance is usually it's over a dollar threshold and we don't know what the dollar threshold these are, but if you get the sense that maybe this is not a, a sizable job, that's another hint, another clue that it may not require it. Since we know they're just looking for 200 of these licenses for these, uh, again, this Appian software, 200 licenses, um, this does not look like a large procurement, guys. We went through to find past performance, past experience in this RFQ document. It did not show up. And there is also not any evaluation factors to be found in this document. I'm going to go to the other thing that they give us here just to make sure I didn't miss something. But this is a sole source brand name justification, basically saying, hey, you have to use these Appian, Appian specific user licenses, they don't want anything else besides this. Um, and so that's just a J and A, there's nothing in there. So I can already say it's been about five minutes, no past performance, no past experience is required for this. I will do a double check on the, uh, the body here, but it's this has just been a cut, uh, cut and paste, copy and paste job. What we just read is the same information that's in the body of beta sam so i don't need to waste my time reading through this uh, as well it's the same information so really what they're wanting for this is the price guys they, they want a price so this is this is example one okay first thing you do control f control find past performance past experience it will pull up for one of those if they have it most of the time you can't solely go based off of that. Steven says command F on a Mac. Yeah, so command F, uh, control find, whatever works for you. Um, it's it's a go-to. Also for instruction to offerers. I always do control F for instruction when I'm looking to find the proposal submission requirements. Makes life a lot easier. Also guys, section L's, section M. Um, we did not see that because this is more of an RFQ, but towards the end of the document, um, if you have a SF1449 or something like that, that's where they're going to put this information, not at the beginning, but at the end of the document. That's another thing that you could use, but this is very much a short RFQ, looks like price only LPTA. No past performance is required for this. 
you could be a new company. And if you know what you're doing, right? And that's the other caveat. You got to know how to price this stuff. You, you still got to be somewhat of an expert in this industry. Um, if you can do that and you don't have past experience, you can still win this award. It's lowest price. If you can be lowest price, say, because it's just you, you don't have a lot of overhead. You know, these are things that small businesses has have as a pricing advantage. You could get your foot in the door with this agency by bidding on something like this. So let's go on to another example. I'm just going to take it from the top, guys. Um, in terms of NAICS codes that you have given me. So the first NAICS code I see is 561312 from Rose. Hey, Rose, hope you're doing well. NAICS code 561312. I, my filters got moved around. Um, 561312. Executive search services. So Rose says 561312. Let me show you. Five, six, one. Yep. So we got that right. So we only have two results for anything coming up in the future. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go with this SES recruitment services. And when is this due? This is due. What the hell? Why are they saying 2016? Another learning, uh, learning lesson here, guys. It says offers due are April 21st, 2016. We know this should not be the case because we set our filters, but it looks like my filter somehow got cleared out. So it happens. You put in my filter, 561312, nothing pulls up, okay? It's the slow time of year, Rose, so it's possible that something is not going to pull up. So for the sake of you and your next code, I'm going to take off this response date um, and see what we have. So the most recent one was this December 28th, 2020 for your next code. We have um, combined synopsis solicitation for this and an award notice already has been made. Um, it looks like it went for 500,000 to this PSS recruiting LLC company. But let me see if I can get the solicitation documents. If I can, I will go through it, but it looks like it's a hot mess because it's been archived. So, so Rose, um, that's all we have for your NAICS code. So I don't know if you have something else, um, but it's not pulling up for that particular NAICS code because it's a very uh, it's a very narrow NAICS code according to beta.sam. So um, yeah, Rose, uh, Sorry about that. I'll move on to the next one, but uh, add another next code if you want, and I'll see if I can pull that one up, but I don't want to delay um, anything. So, four, eight, four, one, 10. So four, eight, four, one, 10. Ryan, I, I see that you also said, do you have any uh, luck searching under agency? Yeah, absolutely. It just kind of depends on what your strategy is going to be. Um, I don't look at agency as only the filter, Ryan, um, but I do do that for agency searches that are um, in conjunction with like, you know, a next code and, and things like that. So a supplemental search is something that I use. So the next next code I have guys, again, we're looking for past performance uh, as not being a requirement, 484110. 484110. This is for general freight trucking and logistics. And this is with uh, Serena. So general freight trucking local. Um, this one's due. Looks like it says it's due. Did it change my, I don't know what, why this keeps happening. It keeps pulling out my response. If anybody knows the person who designed beta.sam, please give me their phone number so I can have a word with them. So put in the response filter again. And 484110, it's also not pulling anything up. Again, it's the slow time of the year, and they may also be using other NAICS codes. So this actually happens 
quite a bit. Um, I will instead, I will just use keywords, uh, Serena, to try to find something for you. Um, I'll use freight, for example. Try and find something. A lot of these are like tankers and ships and things like that. But this is, I mean, this this is real life, guys. This is real bids. Um, so we'll, I'll look at this transportation services shipping that is under your NAICS code and it is due March 5th. And we've got one, two, three, four, five attachments. I'm not going through all of the attachments. I'm going through to what I can find for uh, past performance. But you know, again, this is for transportation services. Looks like it's for the Library of Congress as the agency. Place place performances in Washington D.C. Um, Serena, this so this is a different next code because again, your first next code had the same issue as Rose's. Um, so this is pulling up as a four eight eight five ten freight transportation arrangement. So if you don't have that next code as part of your searches, if it's something that you wanted to add to your list, if you think this is relevant, like I said, I went to the keyword and I found freight. Um, I did find something that's recent and current. So let's go and take a look at this one and see. So right here, I can already tell guys, this is a super easy example. As an attachment, they're giving you a past performance questionnaire. So I don't need to spend any more time. It says right here, you need it to fill out this PPQ. You are required to have past performance. If you don't feel like you have past performance because it's already giving you as attachment three, a PPQ, then you would do a quick bid, no bid on this. It would be a no bid because you don't have the past performance and you would move on to the next one. Like I don't even need to open anything. Um, and that's the whole goal here is how can you as quickly as possible find the information out so that you don't waste your own time, right? So anything with the PPQ, that's another thing. That's a, a, a dead giveaway that they're going to require that as the evaluation factor that you should not be interested in this. So um, I guess that's a good example because it's something different, right? Um, it's, it's another thing to keep in mind. And it's just so annoying that I have to keep retyping this. Um, let me see here. Let me see what else we got going for next code guys. And yeah, you know, you just got to bear with me because uh, it's a slow time of year. And also um, they use multiple next codes. So certain next codes have more results than others. So we can only work with uh, the best that we have to work with. But again, we're looking for those bids that do not require past performance. Uh, Natasha, Natasha, what's going on? Thanks for hanging out. Um, 541611 is her request. One of uh, my favorite next codes. Administrative management, general management, consulting services. Okay, so that's what we're doing right now. 541611. And we've got our response date into the future. So we have 52 live solicitations that are due at some point in the future for 541611. We're looking to quickly find, hey, if we pull up a bid, does past performance, uh, is it required as part of the proposal or not? So let's just take a look. We have this program management and analytical support services. It is due February 17th, five days from now, uh, Department of Homeland Security, DHS, uh, with the Coast Guard as an 8A set aside. So here we go again, guys, attachment two, past performance worksheet. I don't need another one I don't need to open. Maybe I will just to, to show you even further, but they're telling me past performance work sheet. <laughs> they did it as two words, past performance work sheet, but uh, that's a dead giveaway that they're gonna require past performance as an evaluation factor. SF1449 is only two pages long, so that's not gonna be helpful. Let me open the solicitation document though, and let me see if I can't find where it says it in there quickly. Might be a better uh, demonstration for you. So I'm going to go to control F first again. I'm gonna type in past performance. Nothing, it says nothing's pulling up. All of this warning's coming up. 
past performance. Okay, now it comes up. So they're telling me, I really want to get to, yeah. So they're telling you the attachment to past performance questionnaire is attached, past performance information, like only one PPQ, like they're, becomes very evident at the number of yellow highlights if you're using this feature that uh, past performance is required or like the other example we had, um, it's not required. So here is pretty, pretty much what I was looking for. They're saying past performance based on an overall, overall review of past performance, the government will evaluate and offer as past performance, determine the degree to which current previous contract efforts um, are successfully performing in the requirement set of work. Uh, basically, do you have it or not? They're, they're starting to talk here about it. Number one, they're saying technical. It's going to be pass fail. It's going to be acceptable or not acceptable. Pass performance is going to be acceptable or not acceptable. And then your price is only the lowest price that's found to be technically accepted will be evaluated. So again, for this particular 541611 NAICS code, this program management job, um, it's going to be pass fail for technical, pass fail for pass performance. And um, as long as you pass both of those, if you have the lowest price, you will win this. If you don't have the lowest price, you will not win. Uh, but for you, if you don't have the past performance for this, and let's 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 stand on this for just a second. Let me let me come back to you. When something's a pass fail like this that we're seeing, it's either acceptable or not acceptable, versus something that's like very relevant, somewhat relevant, relevant, not very relevant, not relevant at all. Like instead of them giving you like six degrees of being relevant. If they're giving you pass fail, you have a better chance, I would say, at going for it because they're just looking to check the box. So if you're doing your, your capture management, you're making bid, no bid decisions, and you're using having no pass performance as one of your primary search, you know, mental search filters, you know, as a human as you're doing this. Um, if you find something that's pass fail like this, you can think about it for another few seconds if you want. If you have something that you think maybe you could use, maybe it would be a stretch, maybe it would be close, maybe you have some personal past performance you could use that may be good enough, um, consider doing that if this is one that you really like. If you don't like it and it was like a stretch already and you weren't even sure about it, then you know just move on to the next one. But if it's one you're close on and you're just like, man, I wish I had this because this would be absolutely perfect. In the event that you're again seeing something, I'll come back to my screen, where it's basically pass fail, acceptable, not acceptable, then give it give it another few seconds to think about, see if you have anything because they're not being as stringent. Like I said, if they're gonna give you like the six degrees of being re very relevant, somewhat relevant, not relevant at all, you know, um, then they're, they're gonna be a lot more thorough with looking at your past performance they're going to be less thorough with something like this. So just keep that in mind. Since we're talking about past performance as an evaluation factor, you can see it in these two different ways. And um, just kind of, you know, put that in the back of your mind as another feather in your cap as you're learning to do capture management and bid, no bid. When you're looking at these on beta.sam um, that you kind of have either way that you can go on these. It's a more detailed approach. Um, I just don't want you to miss out on something that may be a good fit for you because you're doing just like, Nope, 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 you know, that type of thing. Um, so yeah, so now I will come back to you guys. Let me uh, see if there's anything else. we got a lot of chat going on today. Um, sorry, I can't get to everybody. I will get to as many people as possible. Thanks for hanging out on Facebook and YouTube with me today. Uh, Berwin says, beta.sam is not even pretty. Uh, FBO is definitely more pleasing to the eye. I mean, absolutely, like it, Berwin, I'm with you, man. I'm absolutely with you. It drives me crazy. Hopefully we have more improvements uh, in the future. I'm just not sure. Juan, what's going on, Juan? Um, does the past performance have to be as a company or as an individual? If I have experience in construction PM, but my company was recently established, does this affect past performance of the company? Juan, good question. We do cover this a little bit. If they are specifically asking for you know, a contract that was awarded to your company um, within the last three years, within the dollar range, 
Juan, if they're going to be very specific on what it is they want, then it may preclude you from bidding on it. But that's not the majority of the time. Majority of the time, what I would say is you can rely on other things that you're bringing to the table. I call this taking personal inventory in, in one of my, my free courses. Um, what you want to do is you want to look at your personal expertise. You want to look at any of the expertise uh, of the employees that are now part of the company. Let's face it, that's why you're hiring these employees and you should leverage their experience as the experience at, that you're writing in your proposals past performance because this is going to be your approach going forward. So oftentimes they will just spell it out saying, hey, if your company has not, you know, if this is, it's called a new company exemption or a new contractor exemption. Hey, if, if your business is brand new, but you have shareholders, you have, you know, a CEO, if you have program managers that have experience in the same field, we want to know that because that's also important. So whether they actually spell that out for you or not, majority of the time, I would tell you to do that. I would not tell you to do that if they're being, again, very specific about saying the type of past performance that they want and they need it to be this, 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 and that. You know, if they're just saying, hey, give us some past performance, should be within the last three or five years, should be between 500,000 and a million. Okay, if that's really all that they're asking for and you have, you know, personal past experience, and if you're doing anything as a subcontractor, apps, I mean, that goes to the front of the line, absolutely. But if you don't have actual relevant company project specific jobs, then rely on the, the team members of your team and yourself to start responding to bids. Contracting is going to have to make a decision. They're going to look at this and they're going to have to say it's close enough or no, this isn't what we're looking for. But you can at least give them the chance to do that. I would say you have like a 50-50 chance as long as they're not being overly specific. So Juan, very good question, a question that we get um, fairly often because it is a very good question and it's a bit of a, a challenge for folks. It's a way that you can handle that. It's a strategy. Um, let's see, uh, ML Miles, is it true that sometimes you can use work experience of the own? Okay, yeah, um, that's exactly what we were just talking about. If so, how would you recommend that someone handle the past performance attachment? So yeah, um, so for the second part of your question, Miles, I would I would make it clear in your proposal, in your submission somewhere that uh, you know this key employee brings this experience to to our company, and that's what we're using in the response or whatever. And um, handling the the attachment, you you put them down as the the person who had the contract basically. Um, but you got to find out who their customer was because you still want that to be the POC, the referral. So whoever their customer was, right? But let them know that that is tied to that employee and then go on and talk about the dates performed, the dollar value, um, the specific tasks, the PWS scope um, that was performed on the job. So everything else still is pretty much the same when it comes to the form, but find out who their customer was and if there is a place to um, tie it to that employee go ahead and do that in the form. If not, and you're putting it in your proposal somewhere also as well, which you probably should be, then I would just write a few sentences in your proposal and then just fill out the worksheet um, as they've asked for. You don't have to like make things any harder for yourself than you need to. Um, but I always say it's it's good it's good faith to make that clarification. Um, but I know, uh, you know from firsthand, and we talk about it in the interview that I'm gonna be releasing on Monday, guys, um, another interview with an amazing person, a uh, contracting officer. She's actually training contracting officers and she's got a number of other things going on in her professional career, but she has a wealth of knowledge, guys. Uh, this interview is posting next Monday morning um, and we talk about the strategy and that's kind of why I wanted to do the intro workings um, of that today, kind of leading up to that. So um, pay attention to the, the, the interview that comes out Monday morning. You'll hear it from a contracting officer uh, saying that uh, you can use this, you know, that's the reason why you hire these people to leverage their experience. And she talks about the same exact strategy. And it was very validating to me to hear her talk about it as well, because it's something that I've done and I've seen done and had success with. But hearing about it from the government side, they're just, you know, they're just people too. So um, I would say stay tuned for that, Miles, as well. Um, and all of you guys, it's going to be 
amazing interview. Um, I finished it, editing it uh, yesterday. I'm super pumped about it. And, um, you know, it's just going to be so much value for you, just like these recent uh, interviews have been as well. So hope that answers your question. Um, Ebony was asking, uh, and, and then I'll, we'll get back to pulling Nick's codes next because um, I know I've been in the chat for a while here. So we'll get back to looking at examples really quickly. Um, Ebony says, for the hotel bid, do you know if the hotel does net 30, how will I provide funding before the government send funds? Um, Ebony, just like any other contract, you have to float that. So uh, it's typically net 30, but it may be um, 30 days after the contract's performed that you invoice. So it may end up being a true uh, net 60. Um, but, you know, Stephen's saying hotel typically takes deposits, Stephen said, um, and that's true. So depending on what sort of deposit or arrangement you can get with the hotel, hey, I recommend doing what's best for your cash flow. But when it comes to the government side of things, you're looking net 30 to net 60 for hotel. That's just uh, that's just the truth. That's how it is. So um, let's get back. Um, this last one we were finished with. And we used control F to quickly find. And we also saw that there's a past performance worksheet. So we could have passed on this within about five seconds of looking at it. But I wanted to take it a bit further to demonstrate how you can use um, you know, basically control F to find past performance and past experience to quickly figure that out. All right, so my filters are still good to go. Let me try to get another NAICS code from you guys. And again, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to get to everybody. Um, love the engagement. Don Taylor, 531-390. Let me see if we can have anything here. 531-390, that pulls up. So it looks like these are all due at some point in the future. And this is a uh, real estate related NAICS code, guys. And this one is for Don. Thank you, Don. Um, which one of these do I want to open? This is a sole source award, a special notice. Not really interested in looking at it. Intent to issue supplemental agreement. These are the same. This is with the Army. So I guess let's take a look at this. And it's a special notice because I took off my my solicitation filter because it was just being too restrictive. But even with this, it looks like it's not working. Special notice, special notice, special notice, special notice. So Don, all of these NAICS codes uh, for the future response due date are pulling up as special notices. There are no currently live bids for this NAICS code. Um, I will go to real estate as a keyword instead and see what we can pull up. I will add the solicitation filter on it though. So we've got 20 property preservation and inspection services. I'm gonna to try to find something that since you're looking for real estate, that may be a good fit for you based on what I know. AFRH mixed use redevelopment RFP. So we have a whole bunch of whole bunch of attachments on this. Doesn't look very nice to be honest with you. I'm just trying to find out what this is about. Mixed use redevelopment request for proposals. I mean, they're they're doing some sort of repurposing for the land. That's really all that I can say. This is not the solicitation doc, so I'm going to back out of this. That's more of the work being done. I do not see any PPQ, any past performance worksheet or questionnaire. That's just jumping right out at me. So, um, so far, I'm not able to make that bid, no bid decision on whether or not past performance is required for this. So I have to do a little bit more digging now. Um, and even by these naming conventions, they're a little... They're a little whack because uh, I don't even know what all of these are, um, which is a good example for learning purposes for you guys. So uh, this is an amendment one, amendment two, questions log. 
This might be the RFP doc right here. This is what we just had open. So this may be the RFP doc. What agency is this is GSA or? Yeah, GSA Public Building Service. So let me check this out. Past performance. Okay, so um, I did past performance. It does look like, in fact, this is a RFP doc, even though it's very, very different than what we're used to seeing, guys. Um, it's kind of why I like venturing out into scary places with you guys because, hey, I've not seen it all. Um, this does not look like a, a standard bid that we would see. But uh, it does take us to the table of contents for this RFP where they're taking us to the evaluation criteria on page 22 called corporate qualifications and past performance. Go, no go. I'm going to go to page 22 and let's just see what this says. The offer must submit at least four and no more than six reference projects completed. So boom, there you go. If you're looking for something that does not require your past performance, this is not for you. This is, in their words, a no-go because uh, they want four to six projects. And, you know, this is somewhat uh, real estate. Hopefully, um, this is close enough. Don, maybe maybe it's not. Uh, I did my best, Don, um, to find something real estate related. Uh, but this would be a no-go. So if you, if you didn't have past performance, past experience, um, and you see this, it's like, okay, let's stop. Let's, you know, let's move on to the next one. So uh, the control find, you know, control F, whatever it is for you. Um, it's a very powerful tool for navigating these documents if you know what you're looking for. And as we know, past performance is the word that's used, right? And for every single one of these where they did require it, it has pulled up and used that keyword and, and found it um, right off, you know, right off the bat. So within literally within seconds, guys, we can often find out if something requires it or not. I'm not going more into these, which is weird for me, but I'm trying to stay on focus. So it's like, hey, find out the answer, move on to the next. I'm not going more into these like I normally would because uh, I'm just trying to play the numbers game and show you how on anything we can use this process to quickly get this answer so that you can stop wasting your time and so that you can find ones to bid on and, and get in the game and start going after stuff and maybe start winning. I mean, ultimately, that's what I'm after for you. And this is just one of the, the strategies to get you into the game. But also, we need to get you not wasting your time or spending a lot of time to find something out that you could find relatively quickly, right? So, um, Rose, uh, Rose said also 561311. So since I didn't find something for Rose, let me... Try that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, oh, it's because I got the keyword in there. So January. Yeah. No, these are still super old. I tried, Rose. I tried. <laughs> it's just pulling up super old stuff. And guys, if you're having NAICS codes, let me come back to you. If you're having NAICS codes that are not like, pulling up stuff, you know, this is, this is real. Like I'm showing you this real, this are the real stuff that you're going to run into. You could be doing this, watching me live on your own, have beta.sam pulled up and do this with me, right? You're going to go into these pockets of NAICS codes that are not going to have anything. Uh, part of that is because of the time of the year, but part of it is because it's a NAICS code that's not used very often. And so this is where we get into using other NAICS codes. Uh, relying on PSC codes more than maybe you would. And then also, like I always say, use keywords. If you're having this issue, go into your keywords in beta.sam, type in the thing that you're trying to find and then see what the government is listing that is. You know, type it in and then, you know, without all these filters, it's not going to pull up, but see what, what the feedback is, right? Because it's like you're putting a ping out into the universe with a keyword. You don't know what's going to come back to you. Put the ping out into the universe and see what comes back. Start clicking through it and seeing, are any of these a match? Okay, this one's pretty close. Okay, well, what is the government calling that? What is the PSC code they're using? What is the NAICS code? What are the other keywords and other terms you're using 
then use that information, bring it back to your search and create a search based off of that or, or change your searches to incorporate something like that. I mean, this is just a, a process of kind of like give and take, you know, input and output. You gotta start putting stuff out there to eventually arrive at some sort of process that works for you. And the thing is, it's gonna be different for every single one of you. So you all should be going through this process, especially if you're you're selecting NAICS codes that are kind of like empty pockets. There's nothing in them, right? You don't wanna abandon them just yet because as the year gets busier, it may be used more, but um, you know, you also want to not stick to just that and you want to see other pockets, right? And then if there's just like nothing, nothing, then you have to ask yourself, is the government buying what I'm trying to sell, right? You can't just assume that because you want to do something that the government's going to be buying it. This is part of doing the research stage. It's even before you do the, the searches um, where you go to uh, USA Spending and some of those other agencies to find money's being spent on NAICS codes, right? That's why you do that first. So that when you come to beta.sam, you're not putting in NAICS codes that nobody's using. You know, maybe I'll do another training on that. Um, I talk about it in, in the free courses, but maybe I'll do a whole training on how to basically find those NAICS codes that the government is using so that when you come to your searches, um, they're actually searches that are going to be bringing up things at least much as possible. But hope you guys uh, are having a had a great week. It's already Friday. This week absolutely flew by for me. Um, Antoine saying, yes, who designed this? I hear you, man. I hear you guys. Um, we have LaShawn uh, Duncan here. Um, let me pull up 524291. Five two four two nine one. Five two four two nine one. Claims adjusting. Maybe one of those. See, it took away my. Every time I put something in, it takes away my response filters. So this was due back in 2015. It's the only one that pulls up. Um, so it's just another example of one where there is not a lot on the street right now, um, unfortunately. But let me take away that next code. Let me go to claims. Actually, let me go to adjust, adjusting. Maybe, maybe this will work. I'm gonna go to, I think there's a better, maybe a better next code. I'm gonna go to the, the next code table. I mean, claims adjusting, you're kind of dealing with insurance property casualty carriers, um, dental, other direct insurance, reinsurance carriers. Let me see here. Insurance agencies and brokers. That one may be a good fit for claims and adjusting, maybe. Or wait, 524291. Yeah, so you looks like you already saw this. Yep, 524298. So um, yeah, you are you are ahead of me because you listed multiple NAICS codes um, so let me just try one of the other next codes. It looks like we were both going in that same direction there. Um, but I can I can tell you right off the bat, guys, uh, claims, adjusting, insurance. I mean, FEMA is huge. You know, we had Robert uh, inter Robert's interview posted earlier this week. Robert, um, PM, and also uh, in contracting with FEMA. Uh, Lots of insurance claims adjusting type work with FEMA um, for obvious reasons, right? So uh, we're not getting into that today either, but agency can very much drive the type of good or service that's being bought, right? Um, sometimes it's just using a little bit of common sense with uh, you know what makes, what makes sense. So let's do this. Guess we can do this one. Mm, these are all, these are all old still, but I'm, Gonna see if I can't pull it up anyways. Looks like I can still pull it up. EXIM Insurance Advisory Services, probably somewhat close, but let's just see. Let's see if we can find, does this one require past performance? Let's just, let's just see. I could spell. 
not a nice looking document at all. There's this very nasty text that they have here. So they're telling us here, um, here's the evaluation section, guys. Um, this is what we would see. Evaluation, instruction to offers, probably not too far behind for this one. But evaluation, they're telling us here. One, technical capability. Two, price. Three, pass performance. And then after that, it's the reps and certs that we talk about. So this didn't take didn't take long for me to find this, right? Um, this does require pass performance. It's really not, uh, there's your long list of reps and certs and clauses. Man, this is just so not nice to look through. Um, but yeah, that's like, that's the answer for this one. It does not require pass or it does require pass performance. So it would be a no go if this is part of your, uh, capture management bid strategy, your, your bid capturing strategy. Uh, so yeah. And then, yeah, um, this is the SBA NAICS code table, uh, that we use quite a bit. Steven says. Does corporate pass performance mean personal pass performance? No, Steven, it does not mean that. Um, oh, but you said, uh, also said like at your nine to five. Corporate pass performance is referring to pass performance that your business has. The entity that you registered in SAM.gov, it's referring to jobs that that, that that entity, that business has performed, worked under. Personal past performance is any performance that you or maybe a team member or, or something brings to the company because they themselves have worked on that and now they are key personnel, right? It's called key personnel or shareholders in the company. Um, and now they bring that to the company moving forward. So that's kind of the distinction. Um, corporate does not mean past performance. It means that of the business. So hopefully that helps. Um, Antoine says, yes, the training on how the Gov uses those codes would be helpful. Thanks, Antoine. Uh, as a vote for that, I will keep that in mind for future trainings. Absolutely. Absolutely. Guys, if you said something and I missed it um, and you want me to get to it, repost it. Um, if you don't mind that I missed it, then don't worry about it. Uh, it's just uh, it's a lot for me to get through and I can't get through everything. Um, we have uh, Tim Hatmaker. I'm under my husband's account. Okay. Oh, Candace. Hi, Candace. I'm Argentinian. Hopefully, I said that right. That's awesome. Just so I just got my female uh, minority certification for Florida. Awesome. This is also intimidating. Thank you for your help. Um, yeah, uh, absolutely, Candace. Um, I know it's intimidating. Uh, I'm sure everybody in the the comments in the chat here, our community, um, could kind of let you know that at one time or another they've felt the same way. I've felt it. Um, you know, I still feel it from time to time. Uh, certain things never go away, right? Uh, but the whole point of this, the channel, the community, all of us here, it's to help each other out. We're all trying to grow businesses. We're all trying to, you know, win government contracts um, so that you have a place to go where you're not alone. You know, you don't have to sit in your office by yourself and sit behind a computer and say, man, oh man, I've got to do this stuff I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but you know, God bless you. You got the willpower and you're going to push through. Well, Hey, you know, you've got a group of people that are, are here to um, help you and support you. And you know, nobody can do it for you, but if we're doing it together, it kind of makes us feel a little bit more sane. So um, thanks for joining us and checking things out. Um, video 40. Thanks, Derek. Can you try, let me see here. Can you try five, one two one ten let me give it a shot it's, we've had about 50 50 luck on these um by nakes code so let's see five one two one ten ocean picture and video now let me dare to add a response date right now we got one Five days. All right. So video 40, this is for you. Let's see. And look at this, guys. This is even more fun. No freebies for this one. 
hopefully you can see um, all not nice naming conventions. I have no idea, <laughs> no idea at all what these different documents are. Um, I'll have to open them and try and find the RFP. And then once I find that, I will try to, uh, I will find whether past performance is required or not. And also in the description, they've given us nothing. All they said, this is for uh, rapid goal directed persuasive video and multimedia production based on a systematic approach to providing on target messaging to critical audiences in industry, academia, government, and to the public. Man, oh man, um, I don't think I've seen that many adjectives in one sentence before, but there we have it. So let me let me just see here. You guys know what's going on. Let me open and try and find. Looks like they were nice of us. It was nice of them to at least give us the solicitation doc uh, as number one. So we have a SF 1449 here. Zoom in a bit for you. It's probably easier to see. I'm just going to do what we've been doing. I've been having pretty good luck. And there we go. Before I could even finish typing in past performance, it says evaluation takes us to page 19 of 32. The government will award a contract resulting from offerers using the following factors, technical, past performance, and price. Technical is significantly more important than past performance and the price. So they want to know how you're going to do this. They want to know your approach. How are you going to meet the statement of objectives, the statement of work, the PWS? How are you going to do the work? And that's more important than your past performance and your price. So they want a company that knows what they're doing. Odds are they are not going LPTA on this. Um, odds are this is going to be a best value requirement because they want to pay for somebody who knows what the heck they're doing. Um, Part of that's going to be past performance, but an even bigger part is the technical response. But for today, that is our answer. This one does require past performance. And so um, you would be no bidding this. Again, if you didn't have past performance and this was part of your strategy, but then really before I could even finish typing out the control find search query, it took me to page 19 and it told me that. So. Um, is this helpful guys? I know, let me know in, let me know in the comments because that's really what this whole video is about. Let me know, is this in some way helpful for you? I didn't know exactly which tactic was going to work best for you um, and best in showing you in this live training. But I've, I've showed you five or six of these now. And in all of them, we were very quickly able to find out whether past performance was required or not. After watching this, is this something that you think you can do on your own? Um, I know it's not as simple as checking a box in your beta SAM filter saying, only show me the bids that you know do not require past performance, right? As I said at the beginning of this, we're not, we weren't doing that today. We were going to have to go through the motions because that's the only way possible to do it. But you know, let me know in the in the chat in the comments if this is helpful. I mean. Half of them we're able to find just because you can identify it in the attachments. You know, another third or two thirds of them we're able to find. However, the fractions work out. Another big chunk of them we could find by just using Control F, right? Um, and then for some of them, we have to just go hunting a little bit. And if we don't see it, go hunting a little bit further to make sure we didn't miss something. And then we can verify that, hey, past performance is not required for this that um you know you would be able to bid on something like that um ml miles says yes this is helpful okay awesome i'm glad that is helpful um video 40 says what is a document where you usually can find the past performance that is called the solicitation doc also known as the rfp rfq doc also known as something like a sf 1449 um or sf you know 40 or whatever the form happens to be it's the solicitation document that, you know, let me, I guess let me pull up another one to best answer your question. Cause it looks like I already closed that one out. Um, do I have any more NAICS codes? 541519, I'll do 541519. I think that's just for, uh, for Steven. Other computer related services, yup. 
and then we're doing type of notice. And then our response date. Okay, so for Steven, um, we looked at the Appian one before, so it looks like that's under the same next code. I'll look at a different one though. A lot of these are gonna be software. And if I have to, I will pull up a software one. Marriage data RFP. That's gonna take us to Fed Connect. I'm not getting into that today, so I'm not gonna look at Fed Connect. Are we still in our right next code? Yep, all right. Go back to the first page. They got a BPA, uh, blanket purchase agreement, BPA means you can't win a contract from that, but basically you get a, a license to hunt, you know, pay to play, whatever. Like you gotta get on the BPA first and then you can get task orders off of that. Um, so this is IT next code, automated discharge planning. Um, doesn't mean much to me quite honestly. And who was it? Yeah, video 40 was was asking, what is the document where you can usually find the past performance? So I'm using uh, Steven's next code. I'm answering video 40's question here. The document, like I said, and I'm gonna show you, it's, it's a, the solicitation document. Something like this, it's not very evident which one of these is the solicitation document. Um, oftentimes it's the first one, but that's not always the case. But once you arrive at something, yeah, and this is only two pages, so this isn't gonna be good either. Um, it's gonna be this final document that they're referring to. It's this next one. So uh, video 40, this is the document I'm referring to. It's usually the long document, <laughs> the document that's super long to look through. Um, sometimes it's 100 pages. This one's 27 pages, right? It's the one that's got the pricing claims. It's got the clauses. Um, this is the document that will also have instruction to offers, section L, um, or evaluation factors, section M, where past performance, evaluation factors, all that is going to be housed. Essentially, what is it that you need to respond to this with? That's in this document. It looks like this. It's sometimes an SF-1449 form. Other times it's not though. Like that one, um, I forget what it was, Library of Congress or something, that one that we looked at a few examples ago had a table of contents and a whole bunch of stuff we're not used to seeing. But then in the table of contents, it said evaluation criterion, um, evaluation factor, technical price, right? So. Sometimes it looks like that. They're they're not the same. There are no cut and dry templates. Um, it is supposed to be sections uh, A through M. You can see section B and sections, uh, you know, go A, B, C, D, E, F, all the way through M. And then sections L and M is where this stuff is supposed to be. But when you're dealing with something like a RFQ or request for quote, instead of a request for, uh, proposal RFP, then things are shorter. Sometimes they don't follow that same document structure. But again, this is the document. Um, and just for this example, I'm towards the end of the document, page 81 of 87. They're telling us volume three, past performance factor. So again, for this, past performance would be required. And that was an example for, for Steven for this automated discharge planning. I don't know how, how helpful it's actually been using your guys' NAICS codes for you. I don't know how helpful it is for you because I haven't been able to actually go into the, the actual bid. I kind of just get in and get out as quick as I can. Um, but I wanted to I wanted to pull you guys to get different NAICS codes from all over the board so that I could show you that this process applies to everybody. This isn't a process that's just for one or two types of industries or whatever. Um, this is something you all can do and as you could see, you may not have liked the results because a lot of them did require past performance, but it didn't take us that long to find that out. So you can use that time that you're banking, the time that you're saving using this, and then just move on to the next one. And so, so what if it's less than 50% of them 
that do not require past performance, that's fine. If it's only like a quarter, if it's only 20 or 30 percent, and then the other 60, 70 percent um, do require it, well, that's fine. Just focus on the ones that are fit for you. You don't want to be going after all of them anyways. You don't have to worry about looking at all of them anyways. Um, it's just going to be too much. So instead, spend a minute. And if it's a good one, cool, put it aside. If it's one that does not fit your capture management style, your strategy, if it's past performance, then then do a, a no bid on it. Mark it you know, in your Excel sheet or however you're tracking things and say, hey, yeah, I looked at this, but it requires past performance. So I'm making a decision not to spend any more time. It's a no bid, right? And the ones that are a bid, highlight them, and then you can look at them again with a more more detail, more fine tooth comb to say, hey, you know, can I price this? Can I put a proposal together for this thing? What are they asking? Um, but that way you don't have to go through that whole process with all of them. Basically, throw out the ones right out of the right out of the gate that you know are not going to be a fit for you, and then only focus on the ones that you have a chance at because they don't require past performance just for an example and guys this is all just one type of capture management approach okay it's just it's just one because you may be looking for stuff that only does require past experience or you may be looking at things further that are only lpta only lowest price um, or things that are only best value right or only things that are within my state or, you know, there's there's so many different uh, methods and approaches to capture management. You know, it all just depends on what's right for your company, for your your year looking ahead before the, the busy time. And right now is here. Let me. There we go. Um, before the busy time gets here, you know, we're still coming out of the slow time. It's good for you to decide and identify what are the ones that you are interested in looking at and capable for, and what are the ones that are not, right? What do they look like? What do they require? What language does the government use? It's going to get better over time. If you're new, if you're confused, you're overwhelmed, it's fine. Get started, though. It's going to get better over time. You're going to get better at this over time, but get started at least black and white. Like, okay, if it has this, I'm not looking at this. If it doesn't have it, then I will look at it. Just start there. Then you can get more detailed and better at doing it, but just get started with something because you can't look at all of these once things start getting busy and a lot of bids start coming out. Um, and if you can start there and enhance and get better and, you know, I can show you more capture management strategies. Again, this is one of the big ones for folks starting out, especially. Um, if you can get practice starting using this, I mean, you can see how, how kind of quick and easy it was. It wasn't nearly as bad as maybe you thought it was. It's not as easy as checking a box in Beta Sam, but it's something that you can do. If you can take a couple hours a week or a couple hours twice a week or hell, 30 minutes, you know, every other day, right? To just employ and practice the skill, the strategy, you have to practice it. And just let it let it be like a game. That's another thing that we talk about the interview with uh, the, the contracting officer. And you know, she's so much more than that. She's training contracting officers. She's a wealth of knowledge. I can't wait for you to see it on Monday. And, and another brand new interview I just did the other day. Um, we she talks about. She says, make it a game. Go on Beta Sam and make it a game. Try and see what contracting is saying. Try and talk about um, or, or try and you know read about rather what what government contracting with the contracting officers are trying to talk about in the RFP or the RFQ. Try and just, you know, don't put yourself on the hook. Don't get so geeked out about it. Don't put pressure on yourself. Don't even plan on bidding on it. Just read it. And that's why we focus on reading so much on this channel because it's these things. But this is the first time I've gone more specific with a certain type of reading for capture management. So, you know, I hope it's helpful, but make a game out of it. And if you can say, hey, I did good. Within five minutes, I was able to find out that this job required past performance or this job did not require past performance. If you can do that, you win. Like, that's great. Or if it took you 20 minutes, make it a game to try and get faster at it. OK, um, that's that's really what I wanted to say to tie all of this, you know, kind of t together. So um, 
Yeah, guys, we're we're already pretty much at our time. If there's any last minute questions, um, you know, now would be the time. Uh, Craig uh, Craig Rose says yes. This has been extremely helpful, especially the last one where you pointed out that technical was more important than experience. I've seen that on several RFQs. Yeah, Craig, um, thanks for letting me know that. And again, read into what contracting is saying. Like I said, they may go into like six different variations of relevancy um, for past performance, past experience. Those you may want to stay away from because they're really going to be looking at it. But if they're saying, hey, it's just pass fail, like we talked about earlier, or hey, it, you know, here's past performance, but the technical approach is even more important then like, okay, well, if you have something close or something that you think maybe could squeak by, then maybe it's worth putting in there because you know that's they're weighting technical more heavily than past performance. Um, and so if you can double down on the technical, you know, maybe it'd be worth it. You know, again, these are all gray. It, this is all an art for you to come together, an art and a science um, for your business. But uh, yeah, absolutely, Craig, absolutely. Miles says he's got to run. I got to run too in just a second. Thanks for thanks for hanging out. Um, Berwin says thanks for the Cape Saving download. Easy to use and pleasure to watch. Awesome, Berwin. Thank you for that feedback. Berwin's referring to the Cape Saving downloads that um, I have on my my website. They're not free. They are paid, but um, I think you get a heck of a lot more value than the price I charge for them. Considering people charge anywhere from five hundred to a thousand dollars, and I think you get like seven or eight templates with like. I have 16 video series that talks about the capability statements, um, each section step by step, how to change colors, change fonts, change pictures, where you can get free pictures, all these other things that um, I found people struggle with capability statements. This way you can make the template truly your own. So that's um, what Berwin is saying. And, and thanks for that, Berwin. Kai Sun says, I will be watching this. Absolutely, guys, these are all available for replay um, on the YouTube channel. So if you miss it or you can't watch the whole thing, um, you can always come back. Juan says, thanks for sharing this knowledge. Um, absolutely, Juan, thanks for hanging out. Um, Anthony says, how do you find good suppliers for armor um, and equipment for the military? Um, I got a couple, but asking always helps. Uh, Anthony, quite honestly, you probably know better than me. That's a, a very industry-specific type question. Um, finding suppliers, manufacturers. I don't get into those things a lot on the channel just because I know a little bit about a lot of things, but I'm not an ex expert in every single industry that exists in government contracting. I'm not an expert on um, finding armor and equipment for the military either. Um, if I had some sort of general thing that I would uh, be able to guide you to as a process, I would, but uh, that's finding suppliers and manufacturers, guys. Uh, even if you're trying to find a subcontractor, any sort of teaming thing like that. It's like, there's really not a great place for that. It basically comes down to opening up the yellow book, going to Google and, and start searching, also working your relationships. I mean, I don't have anything magical to say about that uh, whatsoever. Um, I wish I did, because I know it's a huge challenge in the industry and I, I respect the question because man, every time I want a contract, um, you know, or I was bidding on a contract, trying to get pricing lined up, trying to figure out, you know, how am I gonna get this supplied? what have you kind of, you know, where you're coming from with this question. It's like, it's a lot of work, man. Like you have to beat the pavement to find this stuff. And that's, that's my answer. Beat the pavement, go out there and find it. Um, it's just aside from, aside from that with the subcontracting thing, if you're looking to be a subcontractor and you're trying to find, uh, you know, contracts or whatever, then what you can do is uh, you can approach the Ozdabu, the small business office, or just find large government contractors that have a, a small business set aside goal. So we don't talk about this a lot either, but um, if you are looking to be a subcontractor to gain past performance or whatever, and Anthony, I, I know this is getting way off topic almost, um, isn't even related to what you're asking anymore. But um, since I'm going there, I'll just say it. Uh, a large business that wins a contract with the government, they have a small business goal that they have to give certain parts of the uh, certain amounts of the contract to to small business could be WOSB could be 8A could be whatever veteran um, so you can approach those companies and say hey I know you have a small business goal we would satisfy this we can do part of the work so it's basically like a, a backwards thing um, 
based off of what Anthony was asking. But again, Anthony, your question has got to beat the pavement, man. I wish I, I had a better answer for you, unless you have relationships or something like that. Um, these things are so geographic specific sometimes that like, well, what's going on in California is not going to work for what's going on in North Dakota, right? Um, so that kind of prohibits, and I always say, if anyone's able to invent some sort of website that ties all this stuff together for subcontracting, suppliers, manufacturers, um, that's going to be like the next Amazon. Like if anybody's able to create that, it's going to be the next Amazon. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a huge need. It's definitely, definitely missing. Yeah, Berwin uh, due diligence. Yeah, Steven says eBay. I mean, that's, I mean, if you go with the umbrella of beat the pavement, everything, <laughs> eBay, Amazon, like um, what have you, like there's, there's like, everything's an option on the table at that point. Juan says, where can I find more information about those small businesses? Juan was referring to the, um, the question about large business contractors that have it as a requirement to set aside some of their uh, work, a percentage of their work for small businesses as a small business goal. Where you can find that is you go to the agency Ozdebu and they have a list. They actually have a list of uh, the large contractors. And um, I've had it many times where the Ozdebu, the small business specialist gives me a list and say, hey, if you're looking for some contracting work, here's the companies, here are their phone numbers, um, call them. They all have small business goals to work with small uh, small business government uh, contractors, just like themselves, but they're a large. So um, yeah, so I think we are well past our time, guys. So I'm gonna call it, uh, like I said, stay tuned Monday, uh, something to look forward to. That's why I'm, I'm releasing these on Mondays. So you have something to look forward to Monday morning, awesome interview with a, another, uh, point of contact in contracting, but uh, she also has an amazing background in financial management and budgeting for her agency. So stay tuned on Monday morning. I will be releasing another uh, interview. I'm going to try and keep them coming as much as I can. We referenced a few of the things from that conversation today. So I hope you guys are excited about that. I know you're going to love it. I know it's, you know, every one of these is different. Um, and I hope that you're finding value in them because uh, they really are jam packed with a lot of good things. Um, if you like this video, hit that like button if you have not yet. And uh, if you like government contracting and you're looking for a space, a community to kind of hang out with other people that are just like you, consider subscribing to the channel because government contracting is all that we do. We go live every week and we also you know, do cool videos like the interviews I'm talking about um, and a lot of other cool stuff. So thanks for hanging out, guys. I'm going to call it here. Um, we'll be in touch and uh, have a great weekend. So take care.